Hi, I'm Dr. Chuck with Your Filthy Mouth. Today, we're going to be talking about chemotherapy in your mouth. It's a challenge, isn't it? Stay tuned. Your smile is beautiful and possibly deadly. Dr. Chuck is here to tell you how your mouth can hold the key to your overall health. Now, about that filthy mouth of yours. Welcome to Your Filthy Mouth. I'm Suzanne Lynn with Dr. Chuck. And today's show, we're going to be talking about chemotherapy. And um, boy, it's going to be a hard one to get through without having tears in my eyes. And I'm sure we've all been affected yeah. by friends and family that have gone through chemotherapy. And in addition to what it does to the body, it's really affecting specifically the mouth in a lot of ways. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I lived through it at home. My wife went through chemotherapy and, and um, as a dentist, you want to get them to take care of their mouth, but then you realize just how sore that mouth can really be. Mm -hmm. And it's no fun. Yeah. I mean, it's one thing to say, hey, just go brush your teeth you know, floss your teeth, irrigate your teeth. But when your mouth is, is really sore, it's not a fun thing to do. Mm. It really isn't. So. What is the chemotherapy doing to teeth? I mean, uh, is it just making them brittle? And is it a quick quick thing? There's a lot of different things that's happening. Uh, chemotherapy, first of all, doesn't work the same on everybody. You don't have the exact same oral effects on chemotherapy from one person to another. Okay. It, can be, it can vary quite a bit. Um, but it changes the content of the saliva. It changes, oh. so yeah. So you've got a, you've got all this, this. Um, I hate to say it, but poison because that's really what chemotherapy right, is. Sure. I mean, it's going to kill the cancer cells before it kills you, and that's the whole idea right. of it. But uh, um, you're you're changing the the the, the uh, com composition of the saliva, what's going on, and the way your your tissues react to it. So mm -hmm. what I noticed is that. The tissues become very, for some people, very, very sensitive. Somebody can go through chemotherapy and not have any oral situation. Mm. There's no problem. They can mm. brush, floss, irrigate, do all those things, and they don't have the bitter problem. And sometimes they have a hard time understanding why somebody else has a hard sure. time. And that's because we're not alike. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so uh, having seen it, it's, it's, it is no fun. So is it affecting the gums and the teeth? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, for some people. Okay. Uh, it's making the gums very, very sensitive. So when you go in there, just something as simple as mint toothpaste is terrible. You can't take it. Mint is way too much. Like I, as far as pain or taste? Pain. Oh. Pain. It hurts. Okay. It hurts. So uh, um, uh, one of the, the flavors that seemed to work best at home was bubble gum. Of all mm, things, bubble mm. gum seemed to be good. Just gentle. Very mm -hmm. gentle, mm -hmm. very gentle. But you mm -hmm. have the strawberry and the blueberry and the mint and mm -hmm. the whatever. All, and sometimes what I suggest mm -hmm. to people is buy the smallest amount of different flavors, sure. different things, until you find one that you can tolerate, one that's okay for you. Children's toothpaste? When you go through, is that works. okay? Absolutely, whatever you, works. That, you're not scrubbing with pure sugar when you get a no, child's. No, no. <laughs> and you can even use just baking soda. You don't oh. even, yeah, just baking soda, something that's going to be a little bit, it's a little bit abrasive, but that's okay as long as you, it's not burning the gums, because mm -hmm. that's what you, you don't want to, if it's hurting, you're not going to want to do it. Mm -hmm. So so it's kind of a catch-22, because the way to keep from having mouth pain is by keeping your mouth clean, but it's already hurting, so you don't want to keep it clean. Absolutely. Yeah. You're, you're stuck between a rock and a hard place, because mm -hmm. it hurts before you even get in there, but if you don't get in there and clean, it's going to be worse. Mm. So what do you do? So it, it's, it's, a, it's a real challenge. Um, I wanted to talk to you about the um, problem of dry mouth. I think that happens a lot. Um, again, I have the experience of a sister and a mother having cancer and going through really long bouts of chemotherapy, and dry mouth was a real issue. It, it really is. And they, they do make some things like biotin is one of them that's, that's over the counter. Um, I suggest buy the smallest amounts of several different saliva substitutes, that's what they call saliva substitutes, and see if you can find something that's going to be more comfortable for you. Mm -hmm. But yeah, when you have a dry mouth, now you don't have the saliva to dilute the acids that are being produced from the bacteria. And if you haven't been getting the, the bacteria off, the plaque off, because your mouth is so sore, you've got a lot more bacteria, sure. a lot more acids. So it, it's, it's like you said, it's a catch 22. It just keeps getting worse and worse. So uh, again, the experience my family had was um, a really bad taste in their mouth. Is a lot of that harbored on the tongue? Is there anything they, they can do for that? <laughs> yeah. Keep it as clean as you can. That's yeah. easier said than done. Yeah. Uh, they make tongue scrapers. Well, if your tongue isn't hurting too bad, that's a great thing to use. Mm -hmm. That's super. Mm -hmm. But if your tongue is really hurting, that's a challenging thing to use. Mm -hmm. They do have some 
uh, oral rinses. You can use like like uh, Aura Gel or some of these just topical anesthetics. It's going to numb it up for a little while, and for a few minutes that may help. Mm -hmm. But uh, then you're right back to back to you. And sure, that's no fun. Sure. Um, I could see, and if I had someone, you know, close to me who said, look, going to the dentist while I'm going through chemotherapy is kind of the last thing I want to do. Uh, what do you say to that? Well, first you have to make sure that you're in a dental office that can at least be be uh, compassionate mm -hmm. and empathetic with what's going on. Don't you all just, you know... Don't be a baby. No, sure. that's not it. That's sure. not it. So you want to find, make sure you're to an office where they, they understand that this really is, it's a, it's a very real thing. Mm -hmm. So, um, but if you can go there, possibly even going more frequently, if you can tolerate it, that mm -hmm. way you can keep the plaque and the, the bacteria at a minimum. Uh, but again, you have to do what you, choose your battles. Sure. You know, choose yeah. your battles because yeah. uh, uh, what's the prognosis with a cancer? You know, mm -hmm. if there's a good prognosis, you want to try and keep the teeth good and healthy. You know, yeah. you certainly want to avoid any type of of uh, dental uh, discomfort with with decay and abscesses, problems like that. But uh, yeah, choose your battles, and and um, hmm. it's it's not always easy choices of what to do. So I hear you saying, if I can use my counseling that I've been counseled on, I'm mirroring back to you that do the best that you can. I mean, if it means going to a soft toothbrush, if it means Absolutely. using a cloth, whatever you need to do, just do the best you can. Sure. If you take just a, a wash rag on your finger and, and it's moist and it's soft and you can go in there and you can gently rub on the teeth and mm -hmm. rub all around there. If it's not hurting and you can do that, do it, mm -hmm. do it. The water irrigator on a softer, a lower, lower level Lower that or way something. on down. Sure. Again, you're flushing out the acids. You're flushing out the toxins that are being produced oh. in between your teeth. So, yeah, even on low, that's great. You're flushing out. We're not putting it on high. We're not creating the Venturi effect in between the teeth. Right. But we are helping to flush out some of the, some of the bad stuff that's in there. You hold that in your gums? You hold some of the chemotherapy and everything? I guess with... Everywhere. That Everywhere. So again, you want to, but but you're you're not just flushing out chemotherapy. You're fl flushing out the acids that are being produced from the bacteria, the stuff that causes cavities, that causes gum disease. You're trying to flush all of that material out. And so again, if you can use a lot of water irrigator, whether it be a, a water pick or a shower breeze or any of those water irrigators, mm -hmm. warm water on low, that might be comfortable. Mm -hmm. and you might be able to, you know, is it ideal? Maybe not. Mm -hmm. Or is it is it better than nothing? Oh yeah, yeah. it's a whole lot better than nothing. You know, it's so sad because I remember my sister going through really near the end, the hardest parts of her chemotherapy, and then she lost a tooth. And it's like, it's just so disheartening. You just feel yeah. like, what? What's what next? now? Yeah. Why? You know, I mean, so I guess maybe preparation of being careful with what you're eating and it, it just, it, it made me so sad, you know, it's yeah. like she's, she's fighting for her life and then now she's got to worry about feeling bad about her smile and that just made me sad. Yeah, it, and it, it's a challenge because if you're eating something that maybe you enjoy eating, it could be the sweets. It could mm -hmm. be something like that. There's so many things you can't do, but you say, okay, what can I do? Well, I can enjoy mm -hmm. this this piece of candy and just let it melt my mouth. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. that's great. Mm -hmm. And depending on what the prognosis is for what you're what you're dealing with, maybe that's fine. Maybe just enjoy, you know, because right. there's something about quality of life. Sure. But if there's a good chance that you're going to get out of this thing and things that'll be okay. Then we may think about, well, how can we maintain what we have mm -hmm. to where we're not going to be in a worse situation when mm -hmm. the cancer is behind us and we're cancer free, which is that's the goal. That right is there. the goal. But, that's a beautiful goal. Yeah. yeah. Dr. Chuck, we're going to come back with a question of the week. Here's Dr. Chuck's question of the week. Hey, this is Len. Do I really need a fluoride treatment after each dental visit? Welcome back to Your Filthy Mouth, Suzanne and Dr. Chuck here. And Len, that was a great question. We're going to send you a Your Filthy Mouth mug. Yeah. You can show that off at work, at home. Um, I'm going to make Len's question a two-parter. So he's asking about fluoride each dental visit. Can you also address what we're talking about on the show today with chemotherapy? Does that make a difference with how often you should get fluoride? Absolutely, depending on your tolerance. First of all, if you're not going through chemo, if you have a right. healthy mouth, if things are good... Fluoride treatments are great, um, especially, well, I was going to say, especially on retirees, on adults, older adults, but also in, on younger people, too, because in the, in the cavity-prone years, what happens with the fluoride is it makes the outer layer of the tooth just a little bit harder and a little bit more uh, cavity-resistant. So anything we can do to prevent a cavity, to me, that's a good thing. Okay, so he's asking, does he need it every time he goes? Well, it wears off after a while. 
Okay. So yeah, so you want to do that every time you go. If oh, you can do okay. that, do it. Yeah, every time you go. Okay. Uh, I I get it every time I have my teeth cleaned. Mm-hmm. I get a fluoride treatment. I would rather prevent the mm-hmm. problem than let it happen and have to fix it. Mm-hmm. So you can't like, over fluoride. I well, mean, you can over you can overdo anything. I oh. mean, um, you you can overdo water. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So yes, you can over, you can you can make yourself sick with too much fluoride. Okay. But that's rare, rare, rare. Okay. So uh, as far fluoride treatments on every visit. That's a great thing to do. If oh, you can do okay. it, do it. Okay. Unless you're allergic to fluoride. We're both holding up our fingers yeah. like we have something important to say. <laughs> Unless you're allergic to fluoride. T- touch on that real quick. That's interesting. Well, not everybody can take everything, you know. I've never um, heard of that. Yeah. Well, some people, they get sick with it. They okay. get an upset stomach. They're swallowing it. That's one thing. They used to use, in fact, some places still use it, fluoride trays where they would put the fluoride gel oh, in I it. remember they'd that. pop it in there. Oh. And uh, with kids, they'd leave it in memories. for three minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the trouble is, if they made it taste good, the kids would swallow it. Oh. <laughs> Okay, that's so on the point. way home in the car, yeah. they say, "Mom, I don't feel so good." Yeah, <laughs> that's not a good thing. Okay, you lose patience that way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So again, you, there's there's uh, there's good and there's bad. Oh, okay. and addressing the chemotherapy part of it, do you need it more often? If you can tolerate it, if you can find a fluoride that doesn't burn, a fluoride that is that is comfortable for you, that's a great thing to do. Again, prevention isn't sexy, but it mm-hmm. saves time, money, and pain. And and if we can. If we can prevent more cavities on the root surfaces mm-hmm. or anywhere on the tooth, mm-hmm. that's a good thing. Okay. And so, uh, yeah, if the if the chemo patient who is able to get their teeth cleaned at a dental office can have the fluoride, mm-hmm. yes. And especially you get people that have been through radiation to the mouth. They actually make fluoride trays because you get a dry mouth. When you have a dry mouth, your cavity rate goes up. So they make fluoride trays that you can put on there to help cut down on cavities. So... Mm. The proper dose of fluoride is a wonderful thing. If you have a dry mouth, it's a great thing. If you're going through th- through chemotherapy and you can tolerate, it's a super thing. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but if you can't tolerate it, you know you got to look at quality of life too. Sure, yeah. Dr. Chuck. Let's re- just revisit as we start to wrap up um, some of the things that people who are going through chemotherapy we can at least give advice or give you know at least give them the show to watch to help <sighs> relieve, you know, mouth dry mouth and keep their mouth clean during chemotherapy. Well, there's not, there is not one good answer, and that's the challenge, because okay. everybody is unique as they go through this. And some of this is going to take some experimenting on your, on your part. That's why I suggest buy the smallest amounts of the different products in the, in the, in the store that mm-hmm. you can. Find out something that you can tolerate on that. Um, bubble gum, I say, seems to be one that, that if, you're, if your tissues are really sensitive, that mm-hmm. seems to be a little bit less stingy on mm-hmm. that. But uh, stay away from some of the mints on that. Uh, you can even use just baking soda on that. That'll that'll do a little. That's is it ideal? No. But then going through chemo is not ideal right, either. Sure, so sure. it's all a compromise. Yeah, I love so, that. All right. But uh, just do what you can do, and and that's where again it's going to take experimenting. It's going to take trying. Be patient. Um, if you're the one going through it, you know what you can tolerate and what mm-hmm. you can't tolerate. Other people might try and tell you what you can do and what you can't do. They don't know. They're not wearing your shoes. That's right. So, That's right. you know, you, you have to stick up for yourself on those mm-hmm. things. But uh, do mm-hmm. the very best you can and mm-hmm. uh, choose your battles. Yeah. Choose your battles. And if you're going through chemotherapy, if you're going through cancer yeah. or you have someone that you love, Dr. Chuck and I are, I think, um, unified in saying that. We love you and yeah. just stay hopeful and um, very positive in that you're not walking through it alone. So thank you for joining us for Your Filthy Mouth. Thank you. This has been Your Filthy Mouth, a weekly podcast about how what happens in your mouth affects the rest of your body. This is important information, so please share it with your friends. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button on YouTube, iTunes, and all the other podcast sites. And drop by yourfilthymouth.com to ask Dr. Chuck a question or find dozens of links to information about oral systemic health. We'll talk to you next week.